never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a pain is Never seen a cancelled death Never seen on a poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson's not here. Hey, this is Bigger T for the Big C and Bigger T podcast. I'm your boy, Bigger T, coming at you from South Arkansas as always. And my boy, Big C, coming at you from that don't New look Orleans, like, Louisiana. That don't look like Greenbrier behind you. No, it's definitely, no, it's not Greenbrier. I'm actually in New Orleans. Uh, me and the wife getting ready to take a cruise. Going to crew set sail from the port of new orleans tomorrow so we're actually recording this like a day early because i'm gonna be on a boat tomorrow i'll be on a boat big boat no, no. big boat big boat Hopefully lots of don't... food and lots of fun but just if i get an iceberg in mexico i'm gonna be picked off yeah uh, that'd be a bad day yeah it probably ruined the entire trip to be honest with you but when you think of mexico you think icebergs i do one in the same yeah it's one in the same that's right. One, one is That's the right. same. You know, in yeah. Brewster's Millions, you know they they were gonna get water to the to people in Africa by putting a motor in the back of an iceberg and floating. Then, it down. That would end up working and made it ended up working like making lots of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah it made that's him a good. That's like a, a good, good investment. Movie. Yeah, but I that's mean, it, it wouldn't. You can rent to own so much stuff or rent to rent so much stuff nowadays. Yeah, you you it wouldn't be. A challenge. I mean, and instead of thirty million dollars, it had to be like three trillion dollars or something. And then, what, like, what was be, your favorite thing that he wasted money on in Brewster's Millions? The stamp. Oh, my too. Yeah, the stamp. He buys that priceless stamp and mails it. Yeah, he buys that priceless stamp and then mails it to the guys that are trying to keep him from getting it. Yeah, you know, and like on a postcard. Yeah, like a wish you were here kind of deal. Yeah. And playing the Yankees too was pretty good. And voting for none of the above. Yeah, that was good too. Uh, yeah. How many times have we wanted to do that through the years? That's no, right. Yeah. Yeah. None of the yeah. above. Hey, that's a good idea. Just oh, none of them. Richard no, Pryor. Yeah. They're all terrible. That's right. <laughs> no good choices on here. So, Travis, I got taken back to her childhood this weekend. You did? I did. So I'm I'm sitting in my living room, just chilling, watching Hanging out. Watching, you know, in informational TV as I do. Yeah. You know, like how to build a nuclear reactor and stuff like that. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Something, something. Normal. Something smart people do. Brain growing uh, stuff. Yeah. The brain growing station. It's like channel 17 on uh, direct TV. Sure. Yeah. You know, my stepson comes in like early. He's got three of his little friends and they've got two pairs of boxing gloves. And I'm like, what are you, what are y'all doing? They're we're gonna go, we're gonna go box, we're gonna go outside and box. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, fine. Like, I don't care. And so they get, you remember he comes in, he's looking for Vaseline because he wants to punch. He's like already busted a kid's nose. He's like, that way the punches will slide off her faces. <laughs> Travis, we and I was in there remember thinking how stupid they were. Like these kids yeah. are just idiots they're stupid yeah. idiots travis who used to do that kind of crap when they were young uh we did yeah yeah we 100 percent. except was, we were using taekwondo gloves <laughs> they weighed like six ounces so we were like throwing haymakers yeah and i tell you man one time and we i mentioned this to you in our little chat one time brent mcnab got me upside the my left ear well and my head's still ringing from that, I think. Dude, yeah, he, 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 just, he Brent could box. Well, he could just 
if he got you, he was a he was a big old boy. And if he got yeah. one of those haymakers on you, you were gonna feel it, you know. Yeah. And, and I got mad. I got ticked off, and I I went like beyond the rules on him. You know, I shouldn't have. I was a jerk. But well, yeah. I mean, we hindsight twenty twenty and all. I mean, it's like I messaged back. I'm like, you know, we all did that crap. Yeah. Knowing one of us was gonna get worked up. Oh man, it hurt so bad though, man. It hurt so bad. He rung my yeah. bell. I mean, he yeah. caught me just level right in that ear. Yeah. And it, in my old head was just yeah. I know I got a concussion from now, it. Speaking of Brett McNabb, I do remember being a kid and playing Red Rover, Red Rover. Yeah. Send so and so right over. If they said Road Rover, Red Rover, send Brent right over. Brent takes off walking at a leisurely pace. <laughs> It just keeps walking <laughs> like he's dragging the kids. You and those that don't they go run and try to bust through them. And most that don't know Brent, he was as big as we were, yeah, as kids, but he was in the band. So he wasn't really athletic. Like he played basketball in junior high, I think, a little bit, but wasn't all that good. He wasn't all that athletic. Great guy. Oh, uh, terrific, terrific guy. Mom was a teacher and yeah. Um we'd go over to their house and hang out and and they had, his brother did taekwondo and that's why we had those gloves and so we they had twins brent and kent and i think they yeah. had an older brother too they had an older brother yeah their older brother one time man he put a about a four foot python on my lap i was sitting on their bed and he just walked in laid it on my lap and i said you better get it or i'm gonna throw it across the room because <laughs> i'm not like I'm okay with snakes. I'm not gonna touch them. Yeah, I'm not. I'm no. Like if if I'm seeing a snake, I'm looking at it. You can have it kind of close to me. I'm okay. I'm not gonna touch it. I don't want to touch no. it. Mm -hmm. But he laid that on my lap, and I was like, dude, seriously, I'm about to throw it across the room. If you don't grab it, your pet snake is about to fly. <laughs> Anyway, they yeah, were good guys. Spare time. I'd have probably, I wouldn't have waited. I'd have just jumped up and they'd probably busted through the door. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. I am, I'm petrified of snakes. Yeah. It is not a slight scare. It is a petrification. I am yeah. scared. Well, Clint, I got to, um, last week we had Parker rolling on. Man, great. Something. You know, every, we, uh, we keep saying like everyone, great interview, great interview, great interview. Oh, yeah. And it's and they and it really was. I, it was one of my favorite ones, if not my favorite one we've ever done. Yeah, he did. He, he was a great guy, and I enjoyed doing a holy snikes moment with him. I mean, I think that's going to have to become more of a regular thing when we have a guest on. Is yeah, that was he was great with that, and he, you know he was funny too. You know, and, and but here's the deal: I got to update that. Oh man, I did a little research. All right, I'm excited, Clint. It's not true. I know. I know. I I thought, look, I thought there really was an Arkansas woman that was feeding meth to deer, no. training them to attack hunters, and also steal electronics from people's houses. And while she did that, while they were out doing that, she was at home wearing a duct tape bikini and tearing apart clock radios. But here's the thing. I thought it was true, Clint. I thought it was the story, true. The story's far-fetched. I thought it could have been family. It could have been it, some of my family. No, seriously. I think we both know I have a cousin who, yeah. if this was him, we wouldn't be surprised. He has hung out with her. I guarantee yeah. you. He has, and you got a cousin the same way. Yeah, she. They're probably, they're, they're probably Instagram friends. Yeah, yeah, they're probably yeah. I mean, you say there's two different worlds on Facebook. There's at least seven. Oh yeah, and there's like a, there's a meth underworld on Facebook. I don't know yeah. that. I need there. Yeah, I'm thinking that there's got to be a meth underworld on Facebook. Yeah, more than right? likely. Yeah, but it turns out that it was a. Uh, the the title of the webpage said Arkansas Game and Fish, and it had like a little logo and everything. Well, it turns out that's a satire Facebook page. 
Oh, and the official one is Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. And like the picture of the lady they use is some lady from like Indiana or somewhere like that, some mugshot. Yeah. And um, I was disappointed. But here's the deal in the story, Clint. And I kind of said this last week. Of all the points that I found the hardest to believe, like I believed a lady could be feeding deer meth. Right, yeah. I believe she could be training them because if you've been around people on meth, they get energized to do some weird things. Right. right? And so I could believe she was training them to fight, you know, go after hunters. The stealing stuff off of people's, I think deer could just do that. You know what I mean? Like you, you could do that like with a dog or something, you know, like a, reward scenario you know when they bring something to you reward them or whatever with more meth i'm guessing because once once you get once you get the fun the taste the taste of meth yeah and you know but the hardest part for me clint and someone wearing a duct tape bikini was not a hard part for me like no that, it really wasn't that's, it, that's it was, it was. yeah okay fine the hard part with me was that, that she had, cares about clock radios. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, like the only people that have clock radios are people that are using them to listen to the local high school football game on Friday night because it's the only radio they got in their house. And that's it's, it. Yeah, it's 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 the the problem was the story was it was so unbelievable but at the same time we could see it happening. Yeah, I mean, because we I, we all know someone that would do that, and I wanted it to really happen. Is that yeah. bad? Is that bad of me that I no, wanted? Not at all. Not at I all. wanted to, there to be a lady that was actually doing that. I mean, you know, if you were doing it, you know, you're a hunter. You you enjoy hunting. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. What what do you think the meth would have a ta- an effect on the meat? It, it might because all the chemicals in it and meth, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it might have a little bit of effect because you never know. You can shoot a deer and it could be a meth deer, and you could lose all your teeth. Man, I've had some deer. You know, I mean, I've had some deer like almost crawl in my blind with me, especially like does and yearlings. Yeah. You know, they're so curious about what you're doing there, and they're like, they like come put their head in the. You know, like I got a hole I'm looking out of, and they'll be like. Looking at you, I'm sitting there real still, trying not to, you know, move and everything. And also, I'm like, "Get away, dude!" <laughs> waiting on your, waiting on your daddy to show up. But yeah, anyway, no, dude, you're too little. Anyway, so holy shnikes, meth deer is not real. You know, uh, however, you know, cocaine well, bear is real. Yeah, they made a movie. That's about why we're it. a legit news source here now, Travis. You say we're not media, but I say we are because we actually, we got to the bottom of the story. We did. We got to the we bottom of the story. We reported it's not true. It puts us ahead of most major news outlets. It really and we're not putting it on the back page. We're addressing it right away. We messed up. Right off the we if messed up. Wait to the end where you've all tuned out and you're tired of listening to us. We told you about it. Oh, by the way, meth deer wasn't true. Meth, meth there wasn't No, true. we're coming back and we're saying meth deer was not true. Yeah. However, we wish it was. Yeah, we wish it was. We want we meth. Wish deer. it was real. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah. So, Summit, Arkansas, you can rest easy. There are not meth deer running around stealing stuff from your carports. Congratulations. Yeah, your clock radios are safe. Well, Clint, this weekend uh, was a big series with Texas A and M, Razorback baseball team. Uh, Friday night pulled out a good one. Yeah. Looked like normal Friday night, you know, then on Saturday it was interesting because Brady Tiger, former guest on this podcast. Yes. Starts out and Van Horn starts him out with 20 pitches in order. And he does it at the beginning of the game as a starter for a couple of reasons. Okay. I, I like the move. I really did. 
Yeah, I think it was smart. Well, one of the things is, is they're thinking about because of the way Wood and uh, Fauci or Fau- whatever his name is, yeah. even though he struggled this weekend a little bit, um, the way they're pitching, they may not need Tiger to close as much. And so they're thinking about put, trying him out as a starter for one thing. Secondly, a guy that's they're, they're wanting to control – have control of his pitches of how many pitches he does as they bring him back. So they could go in, he could warm up properly as a starter. He wouldn't have to rush warming up coming in, you know, in the middle of a game, you know, where they, you know, they're getting behind and they need him to come in for 20 pitches. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they can, they, it's, it's more of a control setting by letting him start, which I think was super smart by Van Horn. It's why he gets paid the big bucks. It's why he's one of the best coaches in the country. Um, and then well, he, you're gonna know you're gonna know from the jump if something's wrong too, and then you can plan accordingly. Yeah. So well, and they were just gonna do 20 pitches with him, and that was it. They got his 20 pitches, he goes out, and they bring in the other guys. Now, the only problem with the weekend, you got so many guys that are struggling and hurting right now, they about ran out of pitchers. Yeah. You know they had they had their DH McLaughlin was warming up in the third game. You know he was going to have to uh, he might have had to pitch, but they had because didn't Adcock get in on Sunday? Yeah, Adcock got in on. Uh, well, I say it because he's a midweek starter, so you know. Well, they're moving him around a little bit, but yeah, but yeah, Adcock did get in and pitched well. Um, they're. Um, they're moving. They're moving those guys around a little bit, you know. And uh, the, the freshmen are stepping up. They're needing those guys to get back. Parker, uh, Roland was back. His back was good, and he he kind of showed he was tender a little bit a couple times. Looked like he kind of grimaced a few times, but he did well. Calling well, pitches, of course. He handles the pitching stuff very, yeah. very well. Yeah, very well. he did a good job calling pitches. Um, the the offense did a good job. We saw some small ball. We saw some bunts. We saw some some uh, sacrifice flies to get some runs. We don't we don't see that a lot. You know we we got a lot of swing away. You know, um, and Van Horn was talking about that. He said it was kind of nice to play some small ball like that. Um, Bolton, who is you know, a lot of people have been ragging on him about his offense. Mm-hmm. He had some good, some good offenses this weekend, so that was good to see. Um, if this team can get healthy, yeah, I think they can make a run to the to the regionals and super regional. I think that the talent's there. Oh, this team, it. this team's definitely it's Omaha, it's Omaha caliber. Yeah. And if you get to Omaha, you take your chances. You know, you, you've seen yeah. last two years, you know, teams that weren't really that high, highly – I mean, last year Ole Miss was one of the last teams to get in. Yeah. Literally, and then they got hot and won the entire thing. I mean, you, you get in, you take your chances. And I think Arkansas is a – I don't think it's the most talented team they've had in the last few years. Obviously, the team with Kevin Copps that was number one wire to wire was just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, than last year, that team was talented too. But this team's got this team's got some grit. This team's got some heart. Um, they took it on the chin the midweek game against Missouri State. Um, they, and they they, so they were they were on a four game losing streak and to come back and to sweep a team in A and M who's no slouch. Oh yeah, for sure. They were they were a they were a World Series team last year, so it was it was a good win for the for the for the guys, especially a sweep. Anytime you can sweep an SEC team, it's a good thing. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely, for sure. And so that, that was definitely good to, good to watch, good to look at. Um, um, you know, now now we got to just keep it rolling and we got to get those guys healthy. We got to, you know, Tiger, they're going to slow play him, getting him back. You know, the next outing, he may go 30, 40 pitches, uh, depending on how he's looking in practice, things like that. Um, but they'll, they'll kind of slow play him back, whether he ends up and we'll see whether he ends up being 
a um, closer or not, you know. Uh, he well, may I, think, have... I think, you know, and, and McIntyre, McIntyre handled it well coming in the second inning. Mm-hmm. Pitched, a, pitched a heck of a game. He really did. And yeah, he did. Out struggle. Wood just looks like he's going to be a star. And that guy, Parker, listening to Parker Rowland talk about him, it's so true, man. That guy gets so fired up, riled up out there. And just keeping his emotion in check, you know, on the field is going to be the the biggest thing that Parker and Coach Hobbs and everybody else has to do, you know, uh, to make, you know, to, to make him the best he is, you know, the best he can be. So definitely, uh, definitely crazy. Anything else on baseball you got? No, that was, that was it. We pretty much covered baseball. Okay. Good to, bounce, good to bounce back, and hopefully we can, we can keep uh, keep it going and be and the host and be a super regional host. Yeah, that's what you always want is to the road dome hall go through Fayetteville. Yeah, that's right. So the other big news, I guess, the biggest you know, there hasn't been a ton of big news in the Razorback world, um, but the biggest news probably that kind of caught us off guard a little bit was Darian Ford. All of a sudden, um, coming out and saying that he was entering the transfer portal. Um, that was interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Because he had been kind of on a media blitz for three or four days there, man. He'd been on the buzz. He'd been on a couple other podcasts. Like, he had been... Did a really cool Instagram post of him riding horse saying he's heading back to Fayetteville. Yeah, he, he really was kind of being a spokesperson for the team a little bit for the for three or four days yeah. right before he makes that announcement. <clears throat> What's your response? We've talked about this a little bit. Um we both have a um we both, I think, we're rooting for Darian Ford. Uh, Darian Ford grew up in Arkansas. Yeah. Darian Ford grew up a fan of the Razorbacks. Darian Ford, you don't release posts like Barry Dunning did. You don't release posts like Darian Ford did and then just change your mind two days later about transferring no, without a push. Yeah, you just don't. It don't. It don't happen. It, I mean, it happened. You saw it happen last year with, I believe, Jack, Jackson Robinson, KK Robinson. Yeah. Well, that was there was Jackson and KK. Oh, okay. Because Jackson was coming back, and then Ricky counts with the um, at the transfer market, and then oh, okay. Jackson then decided I'm going to go ahead and transfer. Mm. Uh, I well, I mean, you're kind of him on around, but I think it's obvious. Well, well he was told yeah, he was, he was they, told they were pushed out the door. They they yeah. were. The, and the, and the I think it's obvious is, he was told. See ya. And the problem is, is, is fans are so quick to bash the kids. Mm-hmm. Like like that like they'll go at they'll go bash them, and we've seen it hundreds of times, hundreds of times. And sure, you're going to have your Jalen Catalans who you don't want to transfer. You're gonna have your, you know, Trey Knox, Keytron Jackson, those three guys. You didn't want to lose, but you also have me. And, we've had at least one guest on this podcast who we know for a fact told us he was told he needed to transfer. Yeah, in football. Yeah, yeah from football. We're not going to say who it is, but but there's at least one guest, and he took a beating on Twitter, and it wasn't my story to tell, so I didn't tell it. Yeah. Or, you know, other ones he got bashed on a lot of pages and it wasn't him he didn't want to leave he wanted to be here mm-hmm. he, wanted he was to be excited here. about another year as a hog yeah. yeah he goes i he goes i wanted to be i want he goes but they don't want me what can i do yeah he was told you can stay but you don't fit the new scheme and your playing time is going to get cut yeah i mean well i mean it was pretty much I mean, it's what it is. Coaches will say that at first, and then they'll before they have to go in and just say, "We need your scholarship." See ya. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, 
here's my thing, Clint. Um, this we've talked about it before. What we're seeing in college sports is the biggest changes, biggest difference we've ever seen, ever. Right now, with NIL and transfer portal, it's the biggest thing we've ever seen. Closest thing is the one and done in our lifetime, anyway. Right? Yeah. That's that's probably the biggest thing we've seen in college sports that had a big difference, and especially college basketball. And it and it had a big difference. You know, it it did make it changed the way coaches put together their teams, right? And some of them went after the one and dones. Some of them didn't. Well, some of them couldn't get them. Yeah. That's 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 just the way it was. Now, with this, if you look at what's happening, the players that are getting cut, and I'm saying it, they're getting cut. Yeah. Okay? Now, I'm trying not to let the emotion of, and this is an Arkansas kid, Darian Ford, that I've watched play since he was a freshman in high school. And I've been excited to see him play at the Hogs. I thought he deserved more playing time last year, personally. Mainly just because I like the kid. Okay, I like the kid. He's strong in his faith. He seems like a good leader on and off the field, on and off the court. I hear, you know, I live close to Magnolia, and I hear stories about him. Like, like, you know, when he was in high school, he would like take the trash out because the janitor was kind of old. And so he would take the trash out for him every day. He, you know, um, did things at his church to serve the community all the time. He, you know, just all kinds of stuff. The kid, just a solid kid. Right. So I just kind of root for him. Okay. But I'm trying not to let that cloud my judgment here. What he is, okay, whether he's from Arkansas or not, look at the kids that were pretty much told to leave this year, okay? Which I think there's a possibility that Walsh and Devo end up not going to the NBA and end up not as Razorbacks next year. I think that's a possibility. I think... I think they're trying the NBA first because that's the easiest route. I mean, that's the safe face route. That's yeah. them not having to find another school to go play. But here's what here's what's happening. Instead of a coach, and this is not just Mus, this is other coaches, right? This is the way it is. Instead of them putting a guy on a roster that they're going to build up that they know they're going to have to build up and that he's going to play a key part on the team as a junior, that they got, they got to put some development into him, you know, or maybe as a sophomore that you got to build him up a little bit. If he can't contribute the way you want him to right away, then I'm going to go get someone else that someone else has already put the time into I'm going to go get that junior from another school. I'm going to go get the guy that Daryl Walker's already put time into at Little Rock. That's why Daryl Walker can't keep players right now. Because he's training them up. He's training them up down there. He's coaching them well. And then, but they're on a team that's not going to go to the national championship. But then that national, that team that can go to the national championship, like a Kansas State comes in after Noel or Kamani Johnson, and says, hey, why don't you come play for us? And so there he goes. And that coach, you know, that coach at Kansas State doesn't have to train Noel up. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to sit there and try to work on his passing and on his dribbling and on his, you know, his all the stuff because Walker's already done that for him. He's just a plug and play. And so what you, what you have is in Fayetteville, instead of the University of Arkansas basketball team, it's the University of Arkansas G League team. I, you know, you make a good point. You, you make such a good point. I mean, 
here's where I have a problem now. If my son is not a five star recruit, if he's not Walsh, uh, Nick, more of a Nick Smith Jr., Anthony Black, mm -hmm. a five star type guy, why would I send him to Arkansas? Like, why, if your son's a four star, you know, a high four star, would you send him to Arkansas? Yeah. This, this, this number two recruiting class in the country we had last year, there's one of those guys left. And you and three of them went pro, and you ran two off. Yeah, you showed two of the exit. Like I couldn't, in good faith, tell my son. And we're like, not, and we're not done. Like, Pinion may end up getting pushed out. Yeah, you don't, you don't know. It could be just complete, a complete overhaul. And I think that's part of the reason you see coaches like Musselman having success. It was because he's an M, he was an NBA coach, and he understands waivers and he's treating it more like a business and, and look i'm not dogging out muscleman mm. he's doing what the rules are giving him to do yeah okay and but here's my question though is that a sustainable is that a sustainable pattern i think it is i i, I hate to see i don't here's the deal clint i don't think it is Look okay. at the teams. Look at the teams that made the Final Four this year. Did they build their team like Arkansas built their team this year? Well, I mean, Arkansas still made the Sweet Sixteen, so I mean, yeah, but they, but to still, yeah. what what ended up happening? I think you have to have a mix. Yeah. I think you have to be able to recruit good high school players. I think you have to work the transfer portal really well. But you also have to have some guys that are there, man. Here's the deal. You're not going to have those guys that have been there under that coach for a couple of years that are represent that coach out on the floor. That's going to happen less and less. So, well, yeah. here's the thing going into next year, going into next year, if Devo does not come back, okay, if Devo does not come back, who on that roster can say, okay, guys, this is how we did it when we went to the Elite Eight? Nobody. Nobody. What did this team miss more last year than anything? Leadership. Leadership. Jalen Williams' leadership. Leadership. Let me ask you another question, Travis. You know, you got John Pell for your former coach. He's coaching Tennessee Tech. You mentioned Daryl Walker. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the fairest way to judge lower level coaches now? I mean, because you know, because you, you say about it, if you let's say, let's say, let's say Pelfrey goes and finds just uh, a diamond in the rough, finds him, finds him a kid like the like the like the offensive lineman um, that just got drafted for that was a zero star recruit, walk on tight end. Yeah, and like a second round tackle pick. Yeah, um, from North Dakota State, you find that they don't stay at North Dakota State anymore. No, he he's transferring to Iowa. He's transferring, yeah. to, you know, Alabama. He's, you know, you can't judge. I don't I don't know if it's fair anymore to judge these coaches by wins and losses. No, I you're mean, right because you you it makes it tough players. on them. Well, and I brought up Daryl Walker earlier because I heard someone call into drive time and said, they said, what's wrong with Daryl Walker at Little Rock? They said, he, I said, he can't, he can't keep players there. Well, he can't keep players there because he's sending them off to bigger and better schools. Yeah. They're coming in and they're going off and they're doing well at other places. He's he's doing a good job. He's bringing in good guys, and then other big schools are like taking notice, and they're saying, "Hey, that guy." Here's the other thing, Clint. Here's the other thing. Where it affects us as fans, we're going to root for Arkansas no matter what. Yeah, right. So, however they do their roster, no matter what. However. Do we feel the same way about? Joe Johnson that we do about Oliver Miller? No. Why is that? Well, I mean, O was our guy. 
I mean, Oliver Miller w was the guy I always emulated, but Oliver also built something. He was there yeah. for multiple years. Yeah. Right. He stayed connected to the university because his time there meant something to him. Look, Joe Johnson's the most talented player we've had come through. Right. However, we don't really talk about him a lot. There's one thing he don't like. He shows up to Little Rock and plays pickup games with people, and people will put Instagram posts and you know stuff like that, and their Twitter posts about you know there's, hey man, I'm playing ball with Joe Johnson. That's about it. Another one, Gennaro Pargo. Yeah. But Gennaro Pargo has no connection back to Arkansas. Anthony Black, Nick Smith. Are we? Are they going to be guys that they're they're going to go off and they may have great pro careers? Are they going to be guys that we with pride say, "Man, I remember when they played at Arkansas." Anthony Black, I could see that. I don't know. Um, the only I, thing is, he was great with kids. And so there was going to be a few kids that got to meet him and take pictures with him, you know, and I, I know a few kids that, you know, they got pictures with him and stuff like that. And they, you know, he was their favorite player because he was, uh, he was great about that kind of thing. But when it comes down to it though, is he going to, is he going to have a connection back to Arkansas to where he's It's like, man, Arkansas helped make me the same way, you know, you know, the same way uh, Pat Bradley does. You know, or, you know, and, and it's, you know, Pat Bradley, Joe Klein, they're special cases, you know, and those, those guys have chosen, you know, chose to live back in Arkansas. And of course, Pat lives, you know, now in Boston, but he still stays connected to Arkansas. Dude, Joe John, I mean, not Joe, Joe Klein told one of my favorite stories ever on the buzz one day where he said he's trying to show his son something to do with basketball and his son was arguing with him. He said, son, come here. So he took him around the front of the house, put his arm around and said, you have any idea how I paid for all this? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He's like, you have any idea? Like, okay. Anyway, but I'm not, and like I said, I'm not trying to dog Musselman, but I'm not sure it's a sustainable, um, that it's a sustainable pattern. I think there still has to be a good mix. I think you got to use the portal. Okay. You got to bring some guys in. But I think you got to have some guys that you build up as leaders on the team. You know, you got to have some guys that are that extension, the Corey Becks, the um the Jimmy Witt. You know, of course he he was in a portal guy, you know. So yeah. but you know, the um the guy that's an extension of the coach, the Devo Davis, in some ways. You know, are we going to see Muss with a relationship like he's got had with Devo, you know, this year? Are we going to see him have that kind of relationship with other players as we go? And see, I think that's why the, the, this uh, Darian Ford hurts. I think we all saw Darian being that guy. Yeah. And, and, and it hurt because I was like, you know – because it really feels like he, I mean, because like we all think he's forced, he was forced out. Yeah. And that's the fans that are just like, no, nah, he just chose to leave. He wanted to play more than five minutes a game. Like, no, he wanted to show up and he wanted to compete for a spot. Yeah. You, you I mean, you don't, you show up thinking, okay, I, you, you show, if you are a Darian Ford, you're a, what, two, three time Arkansas State basketball player of the year. Yeah. He, he was a, Played in the state championship game three times. Barry Dunning, I mean Barry Dunning Jr., Mr. Alabama basketball a couple yeah. times. You show up and you think you're the best guy on the court. And you think so you're like, okay, I'm gonna come back. I understand these five stars were here, but I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna compete. Musman has decided that this guy is better than this guy, and Musman wants to shuffle him out. Like, hey, well, and that's the tough part. It's not like he was a scrub. Yeah. He was a top 150 player in the nation. When he played this year, he did positive things every time he was on the floor. Yeah. Like his stats weren't bad. Like he didn't. 
he didn't score a ton, but he was not. He's a more traditional top point guard. He's not going to go out there and score a ton. But he did a good job of getting his teammates the ball, and he played good defense. And, like, he did all the things that you would expect for him to do. Um, You, you know, I do think, and not to completely change the other, but, you, I mean, I want at least while we're talking the portal, we got to talk Colorado football. Well, and, and that's what I was going to go to. I'll go ahead. I'll let you segue it. I, I forced it. You just make it smooth. Well, what I'm what I'm saying is, like we talked about, that you don't think Musselman forced him out. Look, folks, the what Dion is doing at Colorado, Dion is unashamedly saying, "Yeah, I told him to go." He's taking away their scholarships, and he told them before he was, did it he was going to do it. There was a, I saw one interview where Dion, you know, they showed a they showed a, he was on the Pat McAfee show. They showed a clip of him meeting with the running backs for the first time. And he said, some of y'all aren't going to be here. He said, a lot of y'all aren't going to be here. He said, which of y'all wants the ball on fourth and one? And they all just looked at him. And he said, see, by your response right now, most of y'all won't be here. I want guys that want the ball. And. <laughs> You know, and he's cutting players like he's cutting that one guy that was outside. It was a linebacker, I think. Like, yeah. or well, his daddy was on the national championship team for Colorado, like one of the most beloved Buffaloes of all time. And he cut his son. You know, <laughs> he cut a, an offensive tackle that was six eight, three hundred and thirty pounds. You know, I mean, he just. Yeah. And there's some players that just don't like him. Like the wide receiver absolutely could play. Yeah. I mean, he showed out in the spring game. He's like, no, I don't like it. I don't, this isn't for me. Yeah. You know, you know, but man, Dion showed up to the first, first uh, meeting. He's like, he's like, look, I'm bringing my luggage with me. And it's, and it's, it's Louis Vuitton. Yeah. He goes, he goes, I'm not, you know, he pretty much say I got better players in the portal. Now that being said, Colorado did go one and eleven last year. Yeah, yeah. It needed a dramatic overhaul. Uh, it's going to be a good test. You know, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know how many coaches could come in with the swagger Deion Sanders has. And and that's the thing, Clint. You're you're exactly right. We're just at the beginning of this. We don't know what it's going to end up looking like. I'm throwing some things out there that concern me of what it could look like as it goes. I could be way off the things that I'm worried about, you know, a coach could be really good at finding leaders in that transfer portal, like a Jimmy Witt, a guy that comes in and takes over leadership right away. If you can do that, if you can find a guy that's not only a good solid player, but also it becomes the coach's extension on the court and comes in and immediately takes over leadership. Man, you can do something with that, okay? But the truth is, a lot of times, the guys that aren't sticking it out at the school they started at are not the type of guys that are solid leaders. That's just the truth of it. Don't do you agree with me on that? No, I know I agree with you, and it's going to be. It, it, Oh no! I, I I'm I'm thinking I'm really thinking about it. you. Look at Sam Pittman's introductory press conference, mm. his first meeting with the players. And you think about Dion's, yeah, just how different. Oh yeah, you know, where 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 Pittman came in and said, "Look, y'all may not chose me, but I chose you." Yeah, and you didn't get the feeling he forced anyone out. Like, no, I'm going to coach you up. But he's going to have to do the same thing. And he well, he did do this. Like, I mean, you yeah. know, he met with Nick Starkle. Yeah. Just I mean, just use him for example. Just like, look, you're not the type of quarterback we want. Yeah. Maybe it's probably best for you to hit the portal. And then, you know, and then he ended up bringing in Felipe Franks. And then, and then just KJ is what KJ is. KJ is yeah. one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, he, he's been blessed with that, that, but yeah, he had to do it some too. And obviously, you know, with the, the expectations have changed and, and mm -hmm. the, um, the speed which they you can rebuild now in football is completely different. 
and the portal's the great equalizer. It'd be foolish not to take advantage of it. It really would. I, I hate it. I hate it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Get to that school, get the get the logo tattooed on your bicep, and that that's your squad. Yeah. That, that's just not the way it is anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that and that to me, that's the thing that's the scariest to me is the fans losing the connection to the players on the team. You know, because I, I pay attention to recruiting, you know. And by the time a player gets to Arkansas, you know, I know a little bit about them just because, you know, I'm on Trey Biddy's website, you know, and I'm on, you know, I'm reading articles about them. I know things they like to do, where they're from, you know, what their strengths and weaknesses are as an athlete, what they're going to bring to the table, you know, whether they're from Arkansas or whether they're and if they're from Arkansas, I've probably paid attention to how they played in high school. You know, I've I've watched how they played. I've watched how they, you know, I've paid attention to their stats, you know, and, and all those different things. I know who coached them. You know, I know what the, the coaches say about them. I know what the opposing coaches have said about them. I know what some of the opposing players have said about them, you know. And the thing is, those type of guys – they could get up there and they're, you know, if they don't right away, then they're gone. Their scholarship's cut. And they're going off to play for, you know, SMU or, yeah, you know, Texas Tech or someone like that, you know. And, I mean, it's, it's just, that's just the, that's what makes me nervous, I guess you could say. I just, I love the connection that the fans have with college sports. That's what makes it so great. I love the connections fans have with it is like with baseball, right? Free agency came around in the seventies or whatever, but people griped and complained about it when free agency came in because players were starting to move around more. And so they were used to having, I mean, there was the Babe Ruth's going, you know, from the Red Sox to the Yankees and stuff like that. And guys, you know, getting cut toward the end of their career or whatever and going and finish it up somewhere else. But for the most part, a guy would go to a team. If he played for the Cincinnati Reds, he would finish or come close to finishing with the Cincinnati Reds, yeah. right? And that's what made baseball so great is, man, you got to know that guy, man, every year. How's so-and-so, you know, how's Stan Musil feeling this year, you know? How's all these different guys? I mean, and even later after the free agency, Ozzy Smith, you know, but nowadays, you know, guys bounce around, you know, and it's, it's tough, you know, cause a guy will go, you know, you're, you're hating him at, I don't know, I'm a Yankees fan. I hate him at Boston. And then all of a sudden he's pitching for the Yankees the next year, you know, but just that fan connection, you know, um, and and I it may be because we do this podcast that I'm more sensitive to it, Clint. Because yeah, I, I see what you, I, I totally see what you're saying. Because you know we get to know these kids. We've okay. kid, we or we you know we've look we don't become best friends with them or nothing like that. But like the baseball guys we've had on. After a series like this weekend, I get on Instagram and say, man, congrats. Great job this weekend. You know, make those some specifics of things that I like seeing what they did or whatever. You know, and, the, you know, they all they say to me is thanks or something like that. But, but I mean, I still have felt like I've sit here for an hour with them and gotten to know yeah. them a little bit, right? And so they kind of feel like my guys, you know, even though, I mean, we're not close. They they probably, you know, <clears throat> wouldn't realize who I was if we ran across each other in public, right? But I still feel a connection to them, because a little more of a connection. You know, just like if you were – if you go to a ball game and you sit by, you know, a, a player's parents and you get to know their parents, you know, you're going to feel a connection to that kid a little bit or something. You know, so you feel kind of connected with them. And then when you see all of a sudden that same kid is 
they're just here for a short time and then they're off playing somewhere else, you know? I mean, one of them is, you know, one of them that we stayed, that I stayed connected with was Reed Bauer. Yeah. You know, I, I messaged him on a regular basis. It stinks that he's at Memphis now. You know, I, I wanted to have more more year of him as a hog, you know. Of course, I wanted him to do better than he did last year. <laughs> but, you see, so maybe I'm a little more sensitive to it because of this, because of what I've seen since we've started this podcast and we've been blessed to be able to do these NIL stuff and, and get some players on here. Maybe that makes me a, a little more sensitive to it. I don't know. Makes my old man get off my lawn stuff come out worse. But, um, you know, we, we, we do get to know the kids and the young men, you know, and you, and we pull for them and, mm-hmm. and it sucks when you see them hit the transfer portal, you know, yeah. You know, we've we've seen Reed hit the portal. Who Jordan, mm. who's on the podcast, and Luke just kind of was done. Yeah, that yeah, was... yeah. I'll see, I'll see Luke post on Instagram. You know, different things, and I'm like, man, I you know, I was just kind of getting to know him a little. You know, getting to, you know, we enjoyed having him. But yeah, you know, and then still, of course, we still got people like Landon Jackson that we're still rooting for, and. Try to stay connected with a little bit, and and some of the others, you know, Campbell. Uh, don't don't contact him quite as much, but need to. But uh, well, Clint, you head off on the ship tomorrow. Yeah, and I appreciate you recording day early. I told I mean, we were joking. I said we just cancel it, but we canceled two weeks ago. Yeah, so like, oh, we need to we need to get it in. Plus. With all the portal madness, it just, I mean, and we were talking about it, I think, before most of your major outlets were, especially NIL and stuff. Like, me and you were talking about beforehand, I was going to change the game. and Yeah. And you've seen it. And it's and it's not just the kids. Now the coaches are like, eh. Yeah. Because here's this thing. If you don't stay ahead of the game, ahead of the curve, you're unemployed. Yeah, that's right. So – and these coaches got to figure it out, and they got to figure out the best way. And Musselman, Musselman seems to be ahead of you know he's he's doing things that other coaches, you know he he seems to be treading ahead of it. I just have concerns about is it the right path, you know, because I think people would say the way Calipari did it wasn't sustainable at Kentucky. With the one and dones, yeah, you know, and so is the way that Musselman's doing it. Is it going to be sustainable? It may be. I may be totally may wrong. Be. I'm, you know, he's a lot smarter than I am. This is pretty easy to say. <laughs> it really is pretty easy to say. So, what are you looking forward to doing on the ship? Man, they've got a you know the ship's got a comedy club. I want to hit the comedy club. You gonna play some tennis? Some tennis? I will not some... be playing any tennis. I, I, I'm be honest with you, Travis. I'm just looking for it to my phone not working. What about pickleball? You can play some pickleball. I, play, I may play a little pickleball. I may you know, little... pickleball is like one of the most popular sports right now. I don't know why. I don't either. I, did, you, did you ever get into racquetball? Uh, I've played racquetball. I, I would fiddle fart around a little bit at Conway Regional Health Center. Play real back and I got ball. serious into it in college. Yeah. Uh, I took the class to learn it, and then I got to play, and and uh, I got pretty good at it. Uh, I, in the class, you remember Coach Murphy? I do remember Coach Murphy. Yeah, because he was Murphy. the one that recruited me. It was well, he, and he and he was friends with my, some of my family. Okay, so and then when I came down to Camden. He had grandkids in the school in Camden. So I've stayed connected with him a long time. But anyway, we were in, he taught my, he was one of the first teachers I had. And he tried to get me to play football when I first got there and everything. But he, uh, I had racquetball class. He said, Travis, you got a girlfriend? I said, no, sir. He said, uh, hmm. He said, we're going to find you one in this class. So every day he paired me up with a girl in the class, okay, which was cool. 
you know, kind of thanks, coach. You know, the problem was every one of them were married or had boyfriends. Every last one of them. How and literally half of them were married. Yeah. Man. So <clears throat> and I mean, and so I was like, the problem was I'm, you know, playing these girls. And so my strength of my racquetball game was hitting the ball hard because I, I could, I could crush it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so I could put it down in the corner and on most people and, and really, and keep it low to the ground and get some points that way and get it by them. And so I couldn't do that <laughs> playing those. I wasn't going to do that playing those girls, you know? <laughs> And so when it came to the tournament and I wanted to win the tournament at the end of the year, you know, end of the deal. Yeah. And me and this other guy were the two best in the, in the class. And he, and which he probably would have beat me. It didn't matter who I played, but he had been playing all the guys that were pretty good. Yeah. All year, you know? And so he'd been working on, you know, working on it a lot more <laughs> And I'd been having to go out there and just kind of tap it around. Hold it in so you wouldn't just kill any Because <laughs> I was trying to be nice. Anyway. But Murphy tried to help me out. It just didn't work. Like most of the time, it didn't work. Yeah. Well, you know, there's you, you've still got some time. Thanks for the thought, though, Murphy. Hey, we made it through another one. Yeah, we made it through another one. By the way, Tom Murphy, one of my favorite quotes he ever said, they were fixing to go play Harding. And he goes, we're sitting, we're sitting in a classroom, an adaptive PE methods class. And uh, he said, uh, we're sitting there in class. And he goes, well, we got Harding this weekend. He said, you know, they're a Church of Christ school. He said, you know, they don't act like Christians on the field. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny. I was like, "Easy, coach." <laughs> but no, anyway. Um, yeah, man, we made it through another one. This is one ten, one ten, one ten, doing it big. Put a dent in it, my man. That's right. Well, when? How long are you going to be out to see? I will be. We we sell out tomorrow, which will be Monday, and we come back Saturday. All right. Well, I'll probably put this out tomorrow. So. Cool. Uh, you'll be out floating by the time it goes yeah, out. I won't know anything about it. I am looking forward to. But stay a, pool. stay away from pirates. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. And if if pirates do come on the boat, okay. If if it was to happen, okay. Watch out for that hook. Yeah. I'm gonna hit his parrot. I'm not because that's what you're gonna yeah, hit the parrot. Pirate. Yeah, hit the parrot. Gonna, the parrot's where the power is. Yeah. Take that parrot and his and what, him in the right cross to the in parrot. the good eye. Get him in the good eye. Yeah, don't hit that. Get him in the good eye. Okay, because if if you swing toward that bad eye, you know it's that's it's not needed. Okay, he's just gonna shake that off, man. That eye, and he's 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 already done that. He's been there, done that. Yeah, right. So you got to get him in the good eye. Get him in the good eye. Get him in the. Good... <laughs> Yeah, that'll be awesome. And when you go eat, eat like when you stop, especially stop, go eat where the locals eat if you can, if you got time. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. We're we're gonna get out. We're hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. We're gonna get out of Progresso, Cozy Mail. So we're gonna we'll, we'll have a good time. All right, Cozy Mail. You used to work there. I did. I got fired. <laughs> yeah. Called Wait, in sick, but I had fun at the concert I went to. So that's right. That was a restaurant at Little Rock. Yeah. well folks thank y'all so much for watching and listening and all the good stuff like and share uh this podcast with all your friends all your enemies everybody that you interact with they need to know they need to hear they need to see what's going on because i think it's important yeah i think it's good you should tell them about it so tell them about it all right Clint. Come sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me.